Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. As I said in my opening, if you missed it, mm, 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 if you missed it now, I said in my opening, we're going to talk today about free yourself to be yourself. I'm going to say that again. You have to free yourself to be yourself. Now, now, when I say that now, you have to be able to forgive those people who are difficult to get along with in your life. Mm, mm, mm. I would dare say all of us have some folk, one or two, at least one, two or more, whatever. We got some folk that are difficult to get along with. They don't always, you know, uh, let's just say, uh, say those things or do those things that would show you that they've received the message or that they are, let's just say, trying to live a better life. And, you know, we can pour into people, but as they say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And some folk just don't want to get it. And just like you had to get it when God opened that door, they are going to have to get it when God opens the door for them to understand. But understand this now, folk are not going to, Folk are not going to make that, 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 that transition until they want to. But you have to be able to forgive those people who are difficult to get along with. And, and, and let me say this now. It will come from you being able to make a decision. You have to make a decision to forgive that person. You are going to have to make a decision to forgive that person. And it's not going to come easy all the time. It's not going to always come easy. Why? Because, hey, we are still in the flesh. And this flesh of ours, man, phew, it's going to be a fight all the way into the grave. This flesh is not going to submit to, let's just say, to the word of God. This flesh is not going to submit to God. This flesh is not even going to submit to you. And why do I say that? If you remember Paul, the apostle Paul, he said, why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? I mean, that brother was scratching his head. He was trying to figure out why he, why he was doing those things that he didn't want to do. And then he came up with the answer. He said, after some thought, oh, wow, it is the sin that is in me. Understand now, when you're not able to forgive a brother, when you're not able to forgive another, the same God who forgave you is telling you, that we too have to forgive those who are opposing themselves. And sometimes in their, let's just say, in their uh, move to oppose themselves, it will overflow into hurting those people that they really should be loving. Matter of fact, let's look at 1 Peter 5 and 6. 1 Peter 5 and 6. And it says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he may be able to exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all of your cares upon him. See, that stuff that you're worrying about, you're not designed. You were not designed or built to carry it. Are you hearing me? So this is why Jesus says, cast all your cares upon me. Why? Because his burden is, his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. In other words, we can never put too much on him. But many of us are trying to walk out, trying to work out, trying to work through some stuff that we're not designed to carry. Some stuff we got to take it to the Lord in prayer. You have to be able to take it to the Lord in prayer. And look at this here. Forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness is, hey, look at you're not just, hey, and now folk might say, yeah, I forgive you. But the, if, the, if the truth be told, they're still holding some stuff on the inside. You're still holding some stuff on the inside. I just can't seem to let it go. Now, I know I said I forgive you. And why I say it's a process. Why? Because it will take some time. It's going to take some thought, some serious thought and some consideration. And I would also like to add, it's going to take some counseling. Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, the Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. So you can't depend upon yourself. You have to be able, my God, my God, thank God for those of us 
who have those 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 pastors and leaders and and mothers who are anchored in the Word of God, who love the Lord. Uh, thank God for our prayer lines. Thank God for those uh, uh, ministries where I can seek counsel and and I can get an on time word from the Lord. And that's really what this is about. And understand, everything has a season. Everything has a season. And you will have to be prepared to outlast your season. Are you hearing me? That season that might be painful, that season of hurt, that, that season of disappointment, that season, whatever that season is, sick, whatever that season is, you have to prepare yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit. I got to outlast this thing here now. Uh, uh I can't let this take me down. I can't let this keep me from becoming the man, the woman, the mom, the dad, the, the, the brother, the friend, the Christian that God has sent you here to be. You are amazing. Lord Jesus, my sister, you are amazing. And you have to be able to outlast your season of pain. See, and when I say pain, the pain of not forgiving. Lord Jesus, you have to be able to outlast your season of pain. And I'm talking about the pain of not forgiving those that you need to forgive. Because it's going to keep you in a cycle where you're just going to keep beating up on yourself every time you see them. Losing your joy and all that other good stuff that God has blessed you with. See, what will you do with your pain from unforgiveness? Will you allow it to break you down? Because that's really what it won't do now. See, that 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 not forgiving, let me tell you now, it will, it will, it will work on you, work in you to do what? To break a good man, good woman down. Matter of fact, it, it that that thing will either break you down or it will define you and turn you into the person God wants you to be, that you want to be. And you have to make a decision, make a choice. Who do you want to be today? You know, Jeremiah said, you know, me and my house, Lord Jesus, we going to serve the Lord. See, I got a, I got an attitude that I, I'm, I'm focused on doing those things that God would have me do. Am I perfect? No, because we all fall short of the glory. But I'm thanking God. Why? Because many in the church, Many within the body of Christ are not growing in the Lord, not growing spiritually in the Lord or moving forward in their life, mainly because they are tied to a post of unforgiveness. Lord Jesus, unforgiveness, are you hearing me? And we have to be able to see this thing here. We have to be able to see what God is now doing. We have to be able to see what God is now saying. Why? Because the anointing of God is on you. And if God has anointed you, appointed you, elected and selected you, he want to use you to do great things, but you're not going to be able to step into the great things unless you can forgive. Look here, you know, you, you can tie a, a, a big, a massive elephant, a ton, two ton, I don't know how heavy these elephants can get, to a little old post, to a little old post, put a chain around his leg, tie him to a little old post, and that elephant won't move until it is untied by its handler. Now, the question today is, who's your handler? Who's handling you today? Lord Jesus, is the devil handling you? Has the devil tied you to a post? I want you to know today now, the enemy wants to keep you tied to that post of unforgiveness where you don't want to let that brother, you don't want to let that sister, you don't want to let that somebody go who talked about you. That somebody that smiled in your face and when they turned their back to you, they begin to talk about you and, you know, mm -mm, that smile left them real quick. See, but the real deal is I want you to know, God wants you to know. Jesus loves you. And because of his love for you, he's saying to you, how can you say you love him, but you don't love the one 
you going to church with. You don't love the one you living with. You don't love the one up the street around the corner. You don't love the one on your job. You don't love the one wherever. We have to be able to forgive. And, and it's been known now, sometimes your, 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 greatest, your, your greatest advocate could have been or could be your adversary. But we have to be able to come with a, a, a gentle tongue. We have to be able to diffuse the relationships. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. We have to be able to, let's just say, address those issues that's going to keep us apart. Because God wants us to live in unity. When you look at what is going on in our government, when you look at what is going on in the world in which we share, we are here to share a world. And you know what's amazing to me? And I was just sharing this with the wife the other day. I said, here, you know, they're taking these rocket ships up to the moon and trying to make it to Mars and trying to build a habitat somewhere out there in space on another planet. And the real deal is look at all the confusion, all of the death, all of the killings and all of the stuff, all of the wars and the conflicts that we're dealing with down here. Why go and explore face if you're going to, you know, not heal and, and, and bring some resolve and bring some peace here on this planet, bring some love here on this planet. What, we want to take spaceships up there so we can start bringing our craziness up there on another planet too? I mean, this don't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You look at what is going on in Israel and in, in, in Iran and in, 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 in Gaza. You look at what Russia is doing to Ukraine. You look at what is going on, I mean, all over. In Africa, parts of Africa, all over. You look at what is going on in Haiti. You look at what is going on in our country. We can look at other countries. Look at what is going on in this so-called great nation. To tell you the truth, we got a lot of problems, and I really don't want to live nowhere else. But man, we need to address the issues. And the reason why we're not addressing the issues is because we don't want to forgive. We've allowed the problem to be bigger ooh, than the decision and the choice that we need to make to have peace. Now, if you don't want the peace of God, you'll fall apart in pieces. Lord Jesus, and that's where many are. They have, they, they have, they have fallen apart, come fallen to pieces. Why? Because of the mere fact they don't want to address those issues and deal mm, 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 with those circumstances that are designed to break a good man, good woman down. My brother, my sister, you better than that. I'm gonna say it again. I don't know who God's speaking to, but if He's speaking to you, maybe you need to make a decision to do something different. Look at this here. Look at this here. I, I, I got something for you. Matter of fact, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a open up your eyes to something today. Look at Romans 7 and 24. Romans 7 and 24, Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh, man. O oh, wretched man, O oh, wretched woman that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Now, now let me say this now. There is a death worse than the crucifixion. Now, we know the crucifixion is bad just based upon what we saw Jesus go through. We know the crucifixion. We know the crucifixion. The crucifixion, man, that thing is that's 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 terrible. That's 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 horrendous. I mean, I I can't even imagine that. I I whew, thank you, Jesus. But you know something? The worst form of Roman execution is not crucifying someone on the cross. I'm gonna say that again now. I want you to get this. Please pay attention. The worst form of Roman execution is not crucifying someone on a cross like they did to Jesus. The Romans took execution to another level. I'm gonna tell you now, the Romans took execution to another level when they tied a dead corpse 
to a living man who was condemned to die. Now, just imagine this now. Can you imagine a dead corpse tied to your hand, his hands tied to your hands, his legs tied to your legs, his body strapped or tied to your body, you carrying them on your back. And I'm talking about you being a living man, you being a living woman. I want to make it plain because I do not want you to miss this. What the Romans did was they tied a dead corp, uh, 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 corpse to a living person that was condemned to die. Oh, Lord Jesus. And that living person was forced to carry the dying and rotting flesh of that dead man, that dead person. And they carried them all day, all night. In other words, they that that dead body, that dead corpse was not removed. Are you hearing me? That dead corpse was, was tied to that body until the decaying body of the dead person, dead man, woman, whatever, would kill its host. Whew. And let me say this now. Some of you are carrying around the dead body of people you don't want to forgive. Lord Jesus, that you, and I know what they did was not nice. I know what they said was not good. God knows it. But you have to be bigger. Lord Jesus. Why? Because you don't want to carry around the dead body of people. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Because what's going on is they are spiritually killing you. Lord Jesus. Man, you got to get this. You got to get this. See, free yourself to be yourself. See, you got to free yourself in order to be yourself. Because you're not being yourself when you're carrying around dead folk. Lord Jesus. That's a choice they made to live like that. Whew, Lord Jesus. See, see what, what has happened? You have lost your joy. I mean, you lost your joy. You lost your peace. You lost your excitement about life. Lord Jesus. Look at the things you was going to do. Look at the places you wanted to go. Look at the things, oh, the doors you wanted to open. Look at the dreams you were carrying in your heart. Those things that was driving you. Those things that put the passion in you. And what happened? It dwindled. Why? Because you don't want to forgive that somebody. And you're wondering why your life is on hold. And you're wondering why nothing's changing. Because you can't move past. Lord Jesus. You can't move past that dead corpse that you're carrying. You got to let it go. You got to free yourself to be yourself. Oh, Lord Jesus. See, God wants you. He wants you to get that drive back, that passion. Passion, Lord Jesus. See, it's going to take passion to manifest that dream now. You, 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 those things you've been carrying in your spirit that you used to carry and you're still carrying, you just shifted it out of place. Why? Because you're focusing on the wrong stuff. And what happened? You end up putting aside your plans and your ideas, mainly because you can't see past that person you have issues with. Let them go. Let them go, my sister. Let them go, my brother. Let her go. Let him go. What? Let that. Whatever. Who go? Let it go. Let it go. Because this is affecting much of the good that you could be or should be doing. Lord Jesus, you got to get this. You got to get this now. Don't miss this. You got to get this. It's affecting much of the good that you should be doing, could be doing. Why? Because you don't want to let them go. Because you don't want to let them go. Well, let me say this. You have to let them go so you can grow. I'm giving you a little rhyme today too now. You have to let them go so you can grow. Are you hearing me? So you can get back your joy. 
I want my joy back. I want my peace back. And, that's, and I want my life back. Man, you should want your life back. You should want, oh, are you hearing me today? Whew. Or, at le or at least you should want to start pursuing the life you wanted, the one that you was going after before that breakdown, before that intervention, before you gave place. Uh, are you hearing me? Give no place, oh, to the devil. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. My sister, my brother, you have a high calling on your life. Some of you this year are going to see some changes. Some of you are going to be elevated in ministry. Some of you are going to uh, 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 change jobs. Some of you are going to move into some new homes. Some of you are going to establish yourself in some new relationships. Some of you, oh God, I don't know. My God, God is speaking new stuff into your life. Know that this is your season to step into a change. You, I believe breakthrough. I believe healing is going to manifest this year. God is going to do some things in your life this year that's going to let you know that he heard you, going to let you know because of your faithfulness, because of your commitment, because of the mere fact that you were able to let them go. God says, now I'm going to grow you up. I'm going to mature you. I'm going to bring you to a place where you're going to begin to see that the best is yet to come. And Lord knows if you would just keep on striving. My God, my God, he promised to do a new thing in you. Shall you not know it? Can you not see it? What happened to the dream? God want to give it back to you. God wants you. Matter of fact, he never took it from you. You blocked yourself. That's why I say you got to let it go. You got to let them go. You have to be able to free yourself, to be yourself. Because God wants that man. He wants that good woman to, to rise up. He wants you to come and get to that place in your life where you recognize and realize Oh, all things are truly working together for the good. He'll turn that bad stuff into some good stuff. And I'm here to tell you now, when you look back over your life and some of the things that you've done, you would wonder, I wonder how God, why would God want to use me? I'm, I'll tell you why, because he know what he packaged you with. Let me tell you something. You are a designer's original. There's not another brother, another sister on the planet like you. You are gifted, talented, skilled, and oh, Lord, you have some abilities that no one else has. And if they have, and if they're doing what you're called to do, let me say this, they're not going to do it like you do it. And then for the mere fact that you know some people that others don't know, God might be trying to reach somebody that you know and that you have influence. You're able to influence their lives in a positive way and God can use you. So know that you are in season. God can use you. That education, oh my God, you didn't go to school for nothing. God going to use that, that education to, to make you, ooh, impactful. You're going to impact the kingdom. You're going to impact the lives of those that would sit before you, that would stand before you, those who, will, who are willing to hear, my God, my God, that message of love that you want to share. When I say that message of love, I'm talking about that man named Jesus. G Paul says it. Paul says, I don't speak, I don't preach nothing but Jesus Christ, Christ crucified. Thank you, Jesus. And my God, in order to reign with him, you have to be willing to suffer like him. Are you hearing me? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God is faithful to deliver us from them all. I'm here to tell you now. I'm here to tell you now. This is your day to be blessed. And if you really, truly want to be blessed, you are going to have to free yourself to be yourself. And I'm talking about your true self. Because some of us have been running around counterfeit, running around hypocrites, running around pretending. Oh, how you doing? Oh, everything is all right. But to tell you the truth, you tore up from the floor up. 
Five cans short of a six pack. Why? Because you just won't play like everything is all right. But if the truth be told, you a spaghetti leg Christian up and down all around the mulberry bush. And, you know, you sitting on the fence like Humpty Dumpty and waiting to see which way you're going to fall. I'm here to tell you, you got to take the reins of your life back and you got to be able to keep on moving forward. Why? Because your future is calling you by name. God, Jesus called Lazarus out of that gate, out of that, out of that tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus was a dead man stinking, not two days, not three days. He was four days in the grave. He was stunk. I mean, stinking. He was stank. Are you hearing me? And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says he was wrapped in grave clothes. Now, if he's wrapped in grave clothes, how can that brother walk? He wrapped up in grave clothes. How could he walk? I'll tell you what, what he did. That brother had to work his way up and that brother began to hop to Jesus. Uh, just like that woman with the issue of blood, she knew she couldn't walk to Jesus. She, she got down on her knees and she began to crawl to that man, that voice, that she began to crawl to the to the to the height of the of the of the noise because so many people was around him. And she said, that's where he must be. I got to see Jesus. And I just got to touch the hem of his garment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And saints, this is your season to step into your change, but you got to want it bad. You got to want it like the air you breathe, Lord Jesus. You got to want it that bad, my God, my God. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Not life, death, principality, power, nothing present, nothing future, nothing. Angels, nothing, no demons, no imps, no dirty dog devils. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Why? Because God is a promise keeper. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. My God, I feel good this morning. If I ain't preaching to nobody else, I preach to myself. And that's what this is about, knowing that you have to free yourself in order to be yourself. And man, I'm going to tell you, boy, when you can do that. Now, let me say this. I, I need to add, I need to throw this in at the sidebar. Because even when you forgive them, some folk don't need to be in your front row. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying throw them away. Put them up in the balcony somewhere. Put, you know, in other words, they don't have to be in your front row. They don't have to be in everything that you're doing. And what I'm saying is, I'm going to still pray for you. I'm going to still come before the Lord, praying that the Lord will build you up, help you. And then over time, and over, you know, over time, guess what? Then hopefully we can, you know, get back together, whatever the case may be. But the real deal is I realize some people, I just can't let them sit in my front row. Uh-uh. Because if God is taking me someplace, understand God is not taking everybody with you. There's some people not meant to go with you where God won't take you. And this is why it is very important that you know and understand what you're called to do and who you're called to do it with. Lord Jesus, I wonder how many times we, you know, figure, well, I'll help a brother, I'll help a sister. You know, I know they're not where they should be, could be. I'll help them get there. It's not by might nor by power. It's by God's spirit. Let God do the work. You have to just push into God and seek his counsel. Know what is best for you. God knows what is best for you. And he's here in your life to bless you and to make you a blessing. Free yourself in order to be yourself. I have some more for you. I'm going to share with you on tomorrow because this thing is deep. And this is, this is, I won't say killing the church, but it is, it is, it is set so many of us in the body of Christ, set us back, holding us up, holding us down, keeping us from becoming our best self. Why? Because we don't want to forgive because they did this to me. They did that to me. They talked about me behind my back. They smiled in my face, whatever the case may be. And, 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 I, and that doesn't, and I'm not saying that to take the sting out of it. I'm not saying that because it didn't hurt because Lord knows 
I've been there. And all of us have been there. The Bible says offense will come to every man. Every one of us is going to have to deal with offense. But we can't allow the offense to take us out of character where we're losing our joy, our peace, our excitement, and our drive for life, our passion to do and to become those men and women God sent us here to be. My brother, my sister, you are amazing. I tell you that every day. And I don't say it because it sounds good. I say it because it's the truth. The Bible says only the truth will set you free. If you can receive this word today and begin to apply the principles that were shared, I'm here to tell you, mm, mm -mm. you'll get back your joy. You'll get back that those things that you might feel is missing in your life. God want to do a new thing. And in order for you to step into that change, you're going to have to be able to forgive. Please free yourself so you can be yourself. And I'm talking about your true self. I'm not talking about trying to be a, a copy of somebody else. Because as I always say, you were born an original. You don't have to die a copy of nobody else. And understand now, this is your season. Why? Because, A, there's not going to ever be another person like you. There is never going to be another person like you. That's how much you, Lord, you, I mean, you are, we talk about original. I mean, ooh, God is calling you to be an original. Mm. He's calling you to be your own true self. There never was, never will be. And this is why God is in your life. He sent Jesus into your life so that you can bring the best out of yourself so that you can become that man, that woman that will bring glory to God that man, that woman that can be a good father, or be a good mother, be a good Christian, be a good friend, be a good co-worker, be a good whatever, a good example, role model of someone who call themselves a child of God. Are you a child of God? You're a child of God when you're able to forgive. He who Jesus have set free is free indeed. Oh, praise God. Praise God. So, mm, mm, mm. I, I think I didn't, I didn't drop it. I didn't drop it. What would need to be said for today? Uh, please, 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 please free yourself so you can be yourself. If you're viewing this on YouTube or on social media, please. Uh, mm, mm, mm. If you know someone that's dealing with, you know, any kind of unforgiveness and anxiety because of what they went through with someone else please share this message with that individual, family member, friend, whoever, all right? Share it on your social media. Let, let, get the, let's get the word out so others can be blessed like you're blessed today. Praise God. I love you. God bless you. And Father God, we just want to thank you for this day. I thank you for the leading of your spirit. And I pray even now, Father God, that you will continue to meet us at our point of need. I pray, Father God, that this word that you have blessed us with today, Lord God, it was meant and it was designed to challenge those of us who are still holding on to those issues that others may have brought into our lives. And Father God, we want to say thank you today, Lord God. Thank you for loving on us. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for reminding us that the best is still yet to come. And Lord God, we recognize and realize, Lord God, that there's no way, Lord God, that we can come before the Father, but by way of Jesus, but by way of you. So Lord, we, 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 we sit at your feet today, Lord God, much like Mary and Martha. And we thank you for pouring into us, Lord God, words, Lord God, that is able to inspire, words that is able to encourage, words that is able to motivate your people to do what needs to be done. And Lord God, we want to thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord, my brother, my sister.